What up family? Just parking the truck for the day. In this video, I'm gonna share with you 21 tips for new truck drivers and for people looking at becoming a truck driver. I've gotten several messages lately around that subject. Different questions, but most of them revolve around the subject of being a new truck driver. And so I wrote down, I jot down, I jotted down, I took some notes, 21 tips to help new truck drivers. Just a little caveat or disclaimer, trucking is diverse enough that there's a bunch of different ways that you could be set up. There's a bunch of different ways that you could be doing things. And so the point that I'm trying to make with this disclaimer is if you listen at all 21 tips that I'm going to share with you, you may hear a few that don't apply to you in your specific situation. But if you listen at all 21 tips, I guarantee you, you're going to hear some that you get benefit from, especially if you're looking to become a brand new truck driver. So with that being said, all right, so I'm going to roll these off quickly because there are a lot of them. Some things you should expect your first year or when you first get started as a new truck driver. Number one, when you first get started, you're probably not going to be making much money, especially if you go the general route with like company sponsored training through a mega carrier. Number two, typically you're gonna need one to three years experience to get what is called a good paying trucking job. Number three, even though this is an experience based profession, you're probably not gonna get paid more or extra for coming to the table with extra experience. In other words, if you need three years experience to get on with a company and you come to the table with 10 years experience, don't expect to get paid any more than the guy that comes to the table with three years experience. So you hear people say all the time, this is a seniority. Seniority matters in this profession and experience matters in this profession. It does, but don't expect to get paid extra because you come to the table with extra experience. Number four, Free CDL training is normally not free. You're probably going to pay for it through some sort of ob obligatory contract or working for the company on the back end. So you need to know that. Number five, when you first get on with the company, don't expect to get the best loads. The best loads are probably going to go to the more experienced drivers, the people that have been there for years. Now, I know I just said a minute ago that seniority doesn't necessarily matter. You're not going to get paid any more than the guy that comes to the table with the minimal threshold of experience. But on the flip side, don't expect when you're new to walk in the door getting the runs that the vets have been wanting to get. The people that have been with the company for years have been wanting to get and been getting. When you first walk in, you're going to need to prove yourself, not necessarily proving your work habit, but proving your loyalty, proving your consistency, proving that you're there for the long run, proving that you're there to work, proving that you're there to learn. And once you establish yourself in that way, you'll, you'll, you'll basically get worked into the lineup of the people that are getting the good runs. Number six, it's possible to get a great paying trucking job right out of CDL school or with very little experience. Now, I don't want to say this in such an absolute way because there may be parts of the country or areas of the country where that may not that may not can happen. But I've heard so many stories of people coming right out of CDL school and finding great paying jobs. And if you are on the Internet looking around for information, you've probably heard that you can't come straight out of CDL school and get a great paying job or get a local job because local jobs all want to hire um, people with experience. But that is not necessarily true. I've heard too many stories now in the five years that I've been a truck driver of people coming right out of CDL school and getting, in some cases, great paying over the road jobs and in some cases, great paying local job so just wanted to to bust that myth because i know that that's something that is out there number seven i want to address what is a great paying cdl job really quick okay so in my area of the country i'm in virginia and there are a lot of ways that you can get paid at your job you could get paid by the mile i know people that get paid sal salary uh, like a like weekly salary, you can get paid by the hour, you can get paid by the load. There are a lot of different ways that you can get paid. 
I would say that generally speaking, coming out the gate, I've heard, and this is for newbies, I've heard pay as low as $400 a week, and this is after taxes, not counting any other deductions that you may have, but definitely after taxes. Um, I've heard figures as low as 400 to about 800, um, and I would consider those on the low end, okay? Now, I've heard other figures as well, but I'm kind of categorizing where I would place it. Four to eight hundred dollars. I would say that's on the low end. I've definitely heard those figures coming straight out of CDL school. Eight to twelve, eight to we'll say eleven hundred. I would say that's kind of the medium, the median range. OK, the medium range are right in the middle. And that's not a bad place to be. And keep in mind, we're talking after taxes. I would say if you come straight out of CDL school and you go right into a job where you're bringing home eleven hundred dollars or more after taxes, um, and there are the, I've heard stories of people doing that as well. You're in you're in the high range So just wanted to address what I personally feel a great paying CDL job is number eight Try not to compare your situation with others. I see questions online on like Facebook or I get them in my inbox sometimes and people will quote be a figure that they're looking at as far as a company that they may be thinking about getting on with and they're asking questions like what do you think about this pay rate or what do you think about this pay per mile so I do believe that you need to be asking around to find out what you should expect but on the same note I don't think that you should compare what you're getting I don't think you should contrast it with what uh, with with what someone else thinks that you should be getting. If you ask that question to the wrong person, the answer they give you may put you in a situation where you take no action. So if you ask a person that's experienced as a trucker, what pay should you expect? Or is this pay good for a new truck driver? And that experienced truck driver gives you an answer like, nah, that's crap pay, I wouldn't do that. Now you're sitting at home, not taking any action, because you feel that the pay that you're being offered is not enough based on what someone else has told you. And essentially what you need to be looking at, especially as a new truck driver, is whether what you're getting meets your needs or not. That to me is the main thing you need to be looking at. So if you're asking around to others, if you're looking at others, if you're if you're if you're trying to base whether you should take a certain pay based on what somebody else thinks. I can understand the purpose in doing that because, again, you, you want to know what you should expect. But on the flip side of the coin, don't let what somebody else is telling you put you in a position where you take no action because you don't know what to do because they told you you shouldn't go in a direction that would actually work for you. Going back to the point that I made earlier, you're going to need experience to get a good paying job. And so if the only way that you can get started in this profession is by taking what someone else feels is a low paying job, but it is something that meets your needs and meets your financial obligations and fits your schedule, then you should go ahead. You shouldn't be hesitant about about getting started and going in that direction and going ahead and beginning the journey. The journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. The journey of one year till you get enough experience begins with the first day. And so it's not where you start. It's where you it's where you're trying to go to. Number nine, there's a massive learning curve in this profession. I've been driving now for five years and I've talked to people that have been driving that are owner operators like myself for 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, and we'll all tell you the same thing. At every step, at every turn, at every at every bend of your trucking career, there's going to be a learning curve. All of us are out here still learning. This is another reason why you don't want to give too much weight to what you think others know. Because the bottom line, I don't care how much experience a person is going to tell you that they have behind the wheel and on the road, if you ask them in a quiet corner, they will tell you, hey, man, listen, on the real, I'm just out here learning and figuring all this out on, on my own as well. So I don't know everything. All right. So at every step, at every turn of your trucking career, there's going to be a learning curve. And what that means is when you first start doing something, you're going to be clumsy at it. You're going to make mistakes. There's going to be a lot of things that you don't understand, but it gets easier repetition as you continue to do it as you continue to do it it gets easier you get more efficient and you get less clumsy that actually brings me to number 10 be careful but you're gonna make mistakes there's almost no mistake that you can make 
out here, especially as a newbie, that someone else hasn't already made before you. I've made several mistakes, and every time I, I make a mistake, I always feel bad. I think any trucker can identify with that. I always feel bad because I made a mistake. But one thing that a trucker told me one time that made me feel a whole lot better, and this is the reason why I'm telling you this, he told me, he said, listen, man, ain't nothing, it's literally nothing that you can do out here that somebody else hasn't already done. So don't worry about it. So any, literally any mistake that you're going to make, you're probably not the first person to make that mistake. All right. Number 11, it could take you a while to actually learn how to drive the truck. When I was in CDL school, I had a father that was also in the business, but I also went to CDL school. Uh, and every day when I would come home from CDL school, I would go to my pop's house and I would play around with the truck and we would drive up to the store to get fuel. And I would ask him questions regarding the truck. Most of his answers would revolve around something like this. Listen, man, the most important thing you need to do right now is learn how to drive the truck. And that would always frustrate me because I felt like, well, I'm in CDL school now learning how to drive the truck. But even though that's and he knew that and even though I was doing that, that was always his answer. And it took me a few years to really understand that. Okay? That is the most important thing as a newbie. You need to focus on learning how to drive the truck. And again, it could take a while. I feel like I took to driving the truck and learning how to back up the truck and learning how to clutch. I took to that like a fish to water. I took to that pretty easily. But I found myself, even after being a driver for two years, three years, still feeling that I was learning how to drive the truck. There's so many different situations that you're gonna be in. There's so many different things that you need to be looking for. There are so many different ways that you need to be checking your truck. Every time you come out of a place, looking at your truck, looking around your truck before you get in your truck, checking for stuff that could put you on the side of the road 15 or 20 minutes after you pull off, all kinds of stuff. You know, there's, there's too many situations to go through, okay? But it could take you a while to actually learn how to drive the truck. Now, that don't mean that it's going to be a while before you get in your own truck or before you get out of the truck with a trainer. That just means that even once you get on your own a year into your driving career, you're still going to find you're still going to find yourself being in situations that you're a little uncomfortable with. There's nothing wrong with that because being in those situations and making it through is what gives you is what gives you confidence behind the wheel. So you definitely need to know it could take you a while to actually feel that you know what you're doing behind the wheel. Number 12, when you're first getting started as a truck driver with your new company, do your best not to turn down loads. You shouldn't be doing anything that is against regulations, obviously, but you don't want to come in the door turning down loads because that's you're not gonna you, yeah, that's not gonna get you closer to being able to get the good loads that the vets get. When you first come in the door, again, you did do need to be prepared to to prove yourself. Number 13, new drivers sometimes get stuck with raggedy equipment. Okay. Companies may try to stick you with the raggedy piece of equipment that they park in the back of the lot not necessarily the shiny new truck that sits at the front of the lot. So be prepared for that one. The thing about that is if you do find yourself in a situation where your company is trying to give you a truck that, um, that is, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna be in violation of, 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 you know, some regulations if you're on the road, like don't be intimidated by speaking up. I guess that's, that's the point about this. If you get something that is, really, really, really um, subpar or really nasty or really, really dirty. New people in some cases, I can imagine you may be a little bit intimidated about speaking up at your new company, but don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated by having to speak up and say, hey, listen, we got to do something about this before you stick me in this. I don't want to be a jerk, but let's do something about this. All right. Number 14, you should as a newbie, especially, but even as a seasoned vet, you should want to keep your truck neat clean and organized 
on the outside and on the inside. It matters, okay? Some of you as new truck drivers with a new company may be switching up trucks often, every few days, every few weeks or whatever, you're in a different truck. And you may be in a situation where you're riding in the same truck. You got one truck all the time. Either situation it is, I, if I was in that situation, would go out of my way to make sure I go, I keep my truck clean and neat and organized on the inside and on the outside. You're a professional, okay? And it does matter for so many different reasons. I would never want somebody, I, I can actually show you my truck right now. I can show you the whole inside of my truck. Nothing, I, my truck, I mean, it's not the cleanest, but I don't have junk all over the place. Like I can stand up in my truck and I can walk around i don't have things obstruct you know right all in the middle of the floor i keep my boots down here in the console and the floorboard obviously i keep my trash bag right here i keep my wipes and my sanitizer over there um but my truck isn't dirty my truck isn't isn't unorganized i like to keep my truck neat i would hate for someone to to for anyone dot officer doesn't matter who it is my wife rides with me sometimes i don't care who it is i don't want nobody um um being in my truck or walking up to my truck and my truck stinks or it's dirty or it's nasty we know that trucks do get dirty and nasty but like every time you pull up to a truck stop clean your truck out take a few minutes to clean your truck out at every chance you get Spray the outside of your truck down. Again, you are a professional and like when you conduct yourself as a professional, you unconsciously encourage others to do the same, right? Like it's hard to, it's, 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 it's difficult for somebody to deal with you as a non-professional when you're extremely professional. You wanna be the guy that everybody talks about that nobody respects. Don't ever clean your equipment, leave your equipment, leave your truck dirty and nasty all the time, right? Number 15, to me, the hardest part of the whole process of being a new truck driver, of getting to the point where you've got a good paying trucking job is the first part that you go through, is what you have to go through to get trained. Even though I got my training from my dad and my dad didn't pay me less than the going rate, I still felt for the first few years, I still felt that I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't making much. OK, um, but but that is to be expected. That's not a problem. You need to get trained. So when you think about having to be in the truck for extended period of time with a trainer or when you think about being gone for weeks as a time at a time while you're getting trained and then you also say, well, turn, I might not be getting paid that much. You can understand why a person would say that the hardest part is just making it through the learning curve, going back to the learning curve of getting of getting trained. So number 16, your loved ones need to be on board with this as well. Some of the reasons I just now went over because you're gonna be, your schedule's gonna change, you're probably gonna be working harder, you're probably gonna be more tired, even if you're local and getting home every night. And again, you may not start off making very much money. So if you have a spouse at home and children at home that that spouse is responsible for, your spouse is going to feel the lack of your presence in the home. I mean, that could happen. So your spouse needs to be on board with this as well. We as truck drivers are strong individuals to be able to go out and do the kind of work that we do for the amount of hours that we do it throughout the day. But, you know, uh, I think as the rapper Fabulous said, um, he said, I'm going to need Coretta Scott if I'm going to be king. And I would say that's the same. It's, it's both ways, whether you're the woman truck driver and you got the spouse at home or whether you're the man truck driver with the spouse at home. Um, if you got a spouse at home with children, you're probably they're, they're, they're without without a lot of conversation and including them in on what's going on. They're going to feel the effects of the lack of your presence in the home. So be prepared for that one. Number 17, stay focused on your goals. Number 18. It's not just about what you make, what you bring home. And trucking, it's about what you make, what you bring home, contrasted with what you have to do to make that money. Everybody in my world is in this situation where you could make more money if you wanted to, but it's a matter of what are you willing to do? Like what lengths are you willing to go through to make that money? So it's not just about getting paid the most money. It's not just about making the most money, making the most per mile. It's not just about that. It's about 
what you got to do to to make that money. If you got to do a bunch of crazy stuff, if you got to run hot, if you got to run over your regulations, if you got or out of regulation, if you got to put your own CDL, your own income uh, in jeopardy in order to make that top dollar, it might not be worth it. So it's not just about what you make. It's not just about what you bring home. It's about what you make, what you bring home, contrasted with what you got to do to make that money. Number 19, as a new truck driver, find the people that are doing what you would like to do and then question those people. I mentioned this earlier, trucking is very diverse and there's a lot of things that you could be doing, okay? So find the people in the industry, in the profession, at your company that are doing what you wanna do, that are running like you wanna run, that are getting the home time like you wanna be able to get, okay? And again, don't contrast your situation too much to their situation. But also, like, don't be intimidated by going to ask them, hey, how did you get it like this? How did you get on that run? How are you getting this, uh, th this amount of, of, of home time? How are you getting, how are you seeing checks like that? How did you become an owner operator? At, like, find the people that are doing what you want to do and, and ask them questions. Number 20, slow down, take your time, ask questions, and listen. And number 21, it gets better. There are a lot of things that you can be doing in this profession. And I know you've heard that before, but just right off the top of my, my brain, I just want to give you an idea of what I mean when I say trucking is diverse and there's a lot of things that you could be doing. So let's just roll off a few things. There's Hot Shot. OK, which are which are the guys that drive pickup trucks and, and carry cargo behind them on trailers. There's Hot Shot. There's obviously van freight. There's chip trailers like I pull. There's reefer. There's flatbed, low boy step deck, log trucks. There's tanker. There's garbage trucks. There are dump trucks. There are bus drivers. There are tow truck drivers. I think that's 10 that I just now rolled off. Now, let me take this to another level. With some of those, there are OTR positions. OTR meaning you're out for several weeks three, four weeks at a time. There are regional positions. Some of those have regional. You could be OTR with reefer freight or you can be regional with reefer freight, okay? You can be OTR with van freight or flatbed freight or you can be regional with van freight or flatbed freight. I'm just going, I just want you to get an idea of all of the different ways that you can go into this thing, okay? So, or you can be local. So all of those 10, not all of them have that. Like you probably won't be an OTR tow truck driver, right? But you know, some of those out of those 10 that I named, some of them break down into subcategories, local, regional, and OTR. Some of the 10 also break down into subcategories, owner, company. And some of those you can actually do a lease, all right? So I'm giving you all of those different variations because hopefully you can, you can understand with that how many different ways that you can be set up in trucking. The point of this 21st tip, letting you know that it does get better, is because it, would be, it wouldn't be good for you to come in the profession, which some people do, come in the profession and leave before you find your groove and thinking the whole time that it's not possible to find your groove. Again, trucking is diverse enough where if one thing isn't working for you, something else may and not to mention you know you got positions where you don't even have to drive the truck like you could be a dispatcher you could be a freight broker there are so many different ways to to get in in this profession and so it does get better you need to know that that's my 21st tip maurice bay the helpful trucker here for more helpful cdl tips go here or consider subscribing to my youtube channel right here you could have been anywhere else in the world but instead you chose to be here with me and I really appreciate that.